Okay, my birth name uh, is Leon Jackson. Okay, Leon is my grandfather, Leon. Okay, and that's my name for people, for everybody, anybody, whatever. Okay, I have a cultural name. Okay, uh, Osekumi Olashuji. Okay, Osekumi is one that can make magical things happen. Okay, and. Uh, Ola Shuji is just a, a, it's a, it's our, say, blood name, and the meaning there might be a little more personal, you know, with the history, okay, but, but Osekumi, you know, Osekumi is, and a lot of the people, cultural people, they may not even know my name is Leon, they just know, like, say, Osekumi, you know, or the drummer in Georgetown, something like that, okay, but, uh, you know, Osekumi is my your traditional name. I was in the military, and when I got out, my parents had moved to, you know, from, uh, they were in Jersey City, New Jersey, okay, and they moved to uh, Georgetown, South Carolina, okay, and, you know, I guess they felt that they were going to kind of retire and whatever, okay, and so when I got out of the military, I said, well, let me go down here, you know, and then I'll, you know, head to the city back home, you know, and I never made it, you know, and everybody, all of my family that were here, they moved back. <laughs> so, you know, because my mother was like, she missed, you know, her Broadway, you know, which is like, say, that's in like Bayonne, New Jersey, and it's like a place where we, you know, you go shopping and you see different people like she may have grown up with their, their children, something like that. So it's like home for her. Okay, so she, you know, when she, she went back and it's been, and where she lived at was, say, across from, you know, like, say, the Twin Towers, you know, where she lived, you could just, you know, yeah. I never thought I'd leave myself because I, I, I love the city, man. You know, all the jazz stuff, everybody. Yeah, yeah, all the jazz, all the cultural things, going to, say, Central Park and then learning, participating with different cultures. You know, that was say my introduction to the, to the drums on a physical, more out there level. Okay, just going to the park and, ah oh man, you know, uh, well my thing was a museum. You know, I go to the museum first, right across the street from Central Park. Okay, it's a museum of natural history. Upstairs to downstairs, then across the street you know, to the park. And then there doing, you know, whatever, all my little spots, you know, either going to the castle, to the circle, which was where the party was at. It's like the water there, it's like a little lake there, whatever. And all the drummers are out there, drummers, dancers, everything. Whatever's going on is going on there. Uh, Harold Augustus Jackson is my father. Okay, and 
Cynthia Ogrita Jackson. I have um, one brother, two sisters. It means a, uh, it, it, I, I live here, you know. All right, so my wife, she's born on a plantation, on Acadia Plantation. So it has something to do with food, you know. It has something to do with talk, you know. It has something to do with, I guess it's like, it's like a psychological thing. You know, where you, you, you may go to some place, you know, like say from Jersey or something like that, and you're straightforward. Okay, and like you coming in, like say through the front door. Okay, say Gullah might be like on the side, coming in the side door. You want to get to the place, but you might not. You have another way of doing it that may be. I don't know. You know, I, and it's it's something that I learned say, when I got here. And I would see, you know, like say people come down from New York, New Jersey, stuff like that, and they have a particular way of acting. They think that because, say, Gullah people or Southern people here are slower, that they are less intelligent. Okay, so whereas some of New York that come down, they know everything. And the one from here, you know, like they're like listening, here he comes. I done heard it 10,000 times, but you need to say it. Go ahead. Okay. And they're more, of, I don't know, like more straightforward, more confrontational, more taking of like maybe a, might be a superior type posture because the people are moving slow. One thing that I understood from the beginning when I first come down here to visit my parents, okay, and I had a friend that's a, matter of fact, she's, her name is Mary. Graham, I think, I know she's, 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 I don't, she may have a, that might be her maiden name. And she's a basket uh, weaver from Georgetown, but she moved to Columbia. But she lived in Jersey City, okay? So she li lived two doors down from me, okay? And so for the high, high school years, we, you know, you know, kind of lived, you know, in our same neighborhood. When I got here, I saw her and I said, wait, what's, what are you doing here? She said, well, this is really my home. I'm not from Jersey City. And I always, they knew that we were from down south because we would call them Geechees. They say, well, that's the Geechee, you know, the Geechee building because everybody from the south lived in that particular building. And they had a particular way of doing things. I'm going, am I going off? Okay, they had a particular way. We knew if we went to a party, you know, like, hey, man, the Geechees is having a party, man. We were going to get food, man. They were gonna have fried chicken, greens, like a ham, you know, soda, a cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are parties. No, no, no. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we go and just say, no, no, man, when they get you, you know, we're gonna eat there, right? And they had more, you know, more, more um, not just the food, but they were a little more civilized. And, you know, say, being a young boy, teenager, they were just strong, man. The young guys, they, they come from up, from down south, up north. We play basketball, and they could dunk the ball. And it's like, yeah. It, up there, it's like if you're tall, okay, now you can do it. Now someone my size comes up from here, and they jam. They're just strong. And if we would fight, you know, physical, they couldn't box up in the city. They box, and they get pretty and all kinds of stuff. They pick you up. And throw you down. Man. I said, no, man, he's, he got Geechee strength. Okay? So they're just very strong, stronger than people up there in the city. The young girls, we, we try to run after them. We all said, no, man, you're never going to catch it. You know, <laughs> it's too fast. But just very strong, I guess, from uh, probably fresher air, better food, you know, or whatever. But there's a, a difference up there. Okay. But say, coming down here, I looked at, say, Mary, and I was like, dang, you know, she has her own car, a nice little job. She has a, you know, like she got a trailer, a car, 
somebody had some land and, and I'm going to this back home. I'm thinking about, a, you know, I'm like, hey man, we're living in the projects, catching the bus. You know, if it's not the projects, there's a lot of, uh, 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 like, it's like a railroad apartments, you know, and it's like a whole nother, and then trying to work the system with, you know, like say welfare, things like that, anything slick, okay? So once, you know, I, I kind of examined that, you know, I'm like, damn, you know, I said, damn, she's, she got her own car, you know, we, we're trying to find a, 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 a train or a bus or something like that, you know. Uh, the people, uh, once I got here, this is something we maintained to Gullah, they would uh, wave at me. And my mentality from the city, I'm like, man, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know you. What is, you know, what you waving at me for? And my mentality was, okay, coming from the city uh, and not caring about people, people laying on the ground, hurt or something. You walk over them, man. You, you really don't speak. Things like that. So I got here and they would wave. And I would tell my wife, I said, okay, man. They want to wave at me. They must be trying to set me up. It must be something slick. Okay? Because this is the environment that I have come from. Okay? I said, well, it must be something slick. When they come, I'll be waiting. You know? And she's like, man, you're so paranoid. They're just hailing you. I would go back to New Jersey and I would say, uh, you know, like, good morning. You know, how's the family? Okay? And they were like, I, I, they developed, they gave me a name. They called me after that. <laughs> I became, you know, and it was like, you know, and what you want to know? Why you want to know? You know, how's it, my family? What's that got to do with you, man? My only defense was, well, you know me. And when I was up here, sick with you, you know, I'm healthy now. I said, now, you know what I do to you then. So you, just, you can imagine what I do to you now, my brother. I'm just trying to be nice. You might need to go down south for a while so you can, you know, kind of, you know, kind of live, you know. And the majority of my, you know, those old friends of mine, they're all dead, man. You know, at young ages and... You know, there's a particular fast life that, uh, you know, Gullah is, you know, kind of, uh, it's slow. It's uh, more wholesome a life, you know, because my, I watch my wife and I'm like, you, you're cooking, you know, for people. And, you know, you're say these say funeral stuff like that you always try to participate in say different f funerals different events and stuff like that where city wise it's like not really mm -mm. and it's like uh gull is like see my wife fixes my food okay and when i was up north it was like man you better fix your own plate <laughs> there's a different attitude there's a different attitude you know and there's a different uh, way of, of sacrificing yourself. My wife says she used to have a garden. I couldn't hang, man. We had it in the backyard. And she's pulling weeds, man. It's like every day, you know. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. But it's like she'll put a hat on or whatever. And she'll have a water on the side or something like that. And get into it. And, you know. She's like, uh, you're like the manager or something, man. I don't, I am not feeling it, you know. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know what you're looking for, really. We have a whole nother concept of, you know, say, um, in the yard, okay, because I don't see the, a lot of the things. Just say she'll clean up or she'll, but you know, especially working with that garden, I couldn't, I said, wait, you did all that? I said, yeah, but we had, you know, they had good food. You know, and uh, she's probably still, she's stronger than I am. You know, yeah. And I, I know she, and she was not born in a, um, she was not born in a hospital. You know, she was born in a plantation. And I, 
you know, I didn't know even being born on that plantation with all those trees and, and, and you know, fresh air and, and good food, you know, it, 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 that's, yeah, that made a difference. One of the things that I did, you know, uh, was blacksmithing, okay? And a friend of mine, you know, I work, I, I know what to do, you know, if I need to do it. But that's not my, you know, you have someone that's a, say maybe a master, I can be an apprentice. So if it's like, hey, Sukumi, you know, come on, man, you know. But my thing would be, you know, I had some brothers, you know, we work in Charleston with uh, Mr. Simmons, okay? with Mr. Simmons, one of his uh, grandsons. And, you know, we do contracts, you know, and what I would do, I'm a drummer, okay? I'd be playing the drums, you know, and I would just drum, okay? And they'd be doing the hard work, and it's all right. Sometimes they just grab my wrist, let's go. Then we have to do whatever they need my hands for, you know? So I, I learned some, you know? And I know what I see, you know, what's right, what's wrong, something like that, okay? But I would stay on the drums. So that I had a, you know, a long time, even before, you know, say Mr. Simmons died, I had a chance to talk to him, you know, because I had gone to Haiti a couple of times. And his technique, very, very Haitian. And I asked him, what's up, man? I said, you've been to Haiti? And he would just laugh. You know, he just, he never answered me. He would just laugh. And we both end up laughing, you know, because he's laughing. Okay, but he gave me a lot, just different things about his, you know, his, uh, the work and, you know, say blacksmithing, things like that, you know. Then one of his students, I still kind of back and forth with, you know, so, you know, okay, you say, uh, say, my, when I first got here, see, I, I used to drum in the park. I'm like a park drummer. And I had a brother, a good friend of mine, his name was Calvin Golden, okay? Calvin was, he's an Israelite brother, okay? And he taught me, he, he was the brother of Gene Golden, okay? Gene was like, the, 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 the really the true drummer and Gene played with the say with the Fania All Stars you know with the, the Tito Puente Celia Cruz Eddie Palmieri you know Reto all of them you know and uh, uh, Cannonball Adley Louis Armstrong you know across the you know the board and I've been his understudy like, probably the last 10 years okay so but I used to hang with his brother. His brother was older than me. And he was an Israelite brother, and so he would take me to his house, and he would have his drum set up, and he would have his biblical, he, you know, his Bible, and we have a little herb teas, things like that. He talked to me about Africa, and talked to me about the drums, and he wouldn't allow me to play the drum. He would just tell me, this is what a particular note sounds like. It's open, this is closed. That's it. Pick up the bell. And I, you know, first year, that's all I played was bell. Yeah. Okay. He said, you got to know what the drum sounds like, man. Yeah, you got to know humility. You have to work your way to the drum. Just to sit down and, you know, I bought this drum and I, you know. Mm -mm. So I had to, for that first year, you know, that's all that's what I did and carry his drums, you know. And but now if I'm with drumming, if I'm with some brothers, they they drumming, I can I know how to play a bell. You know. So sometimes with that with the, the drums you have to a lot of you know, good drummer man, you come in either dancing or playing percussion. Okay. You dance. So you're out there with the dancers so that you know what it takes for the you know, what it takes for the drummer to get that dancer off. You know, to get her in that particular mood, mode, you know, of now we got communication and we're going to, you know. So, you know, you have drummers coming out of that, say with dances, then some coming out of the percussion thing. 
Like me dancing, my wife laughs at me, man. It's like a joke. If I want to make her laugh, I dance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. When I first got here, uh, I had, uh, you know, brother, somebody had bought some drums, some conga drums at the music store. They didn't pick them up. I saw them. I said, oh, man, what's some drums? He says, look, man, if they don't come by Saturday, you can get them. I got the drums, okay? I had another brother that was here, uh, Don. I think he's in Florida, Florida now. Don Harold, okay? He worked with John. I think he may be an ethnomusicologist, okay? Last I heard, him and his wife, he's a Nigerian girl working at, uh, I don't know if it's Disney World, Bush Garden, something like that down there, okay? And he, you know, saw my drums and he said, well, come on, man and uh, you know, showed me some things. And then we went to uh, Charleston and they had the Moja dancers there then. Okay, so I started working with the Moja dancers, say for about five, about five years. Okay, so I worked with them and um, it got to a point where uh, we do shows. We open up for, you know, hey man, Burning Spear, uh, Lucky Dubay, Sister Cow, you know, Brigadier Jerry, you know, some Grammy winning, you know, winning, right. you know, brothers that were on tour. And when they would come through, okay, we open up for them. I got tired of it. You know, it got a little. No, nah, not the work. I love the work. Uh, I didn't like the. Uh, there's a phoniness, phoniness about it, okay? And it got, you know, when you get to a point, well, how much are you getting paid? Well, what's that? What are you getting? What's that? You know, then you have the groupies, man. You know, like after the show, then here, all the females. It's like, oh, come on, man, I got a wife, you know? And, you, you know, my thing is, if you're going to represent something, man, represent it, man, you know? Don't just let your, your collar, your dog collar come out because you're a musician and, you know, you have a lot of females that are, they may be groupies, males or female, okay? Groupies, and it's like, okay, now you just want to, you know, just sell your culture. I guess I was more cultural, okay? So what I did is I said, well, okay, I have my son, and my son would always, I had him, I started, he started with me, with a tambourine, a drum. I subcontract another drummer from uh, Oyutunji Village, okay? And my son would play. I, I teach him like a, you know, boop, 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 Just, you know, a timekeeper, right. clave, or a little shaker. Then my wife, she knew how to, you know, play a bell, okay? And she could dance. So that's kind of how we started. Okay, so, and my son was in Pampas, okay, and uh, next son, you know, as he, they, as he advanced, it's okay, well, you, you know, percussion, now you're going to play the bottom, which is basic, doom, to doom, 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 to doom, 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 to doom, doom, and it will do all the things on top of that, but you maintain the bottom. Then my next son, that was Hassan, the next son, Saud, we put him on the, the clave. You know, do, 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 do. So he, he can understand time and how things fit in together. Okay? So once we, and then my third son, Pianchi, this guy just was a percussionist. Okay? I had bought a balafone. I said, I'm going to work with it. He wants the balafone. I got a steel pan. He wants the steel pan. Okay, so it's okay, I'll give it up. This is my son, you know, so you, you got it. Okay, that was Piaf, the third one, and the fourth one, uh, Jabari, uh, he's, we, he's a drummer, okay? So we said, well, look, um, my son Hassan said he wanted to be a top player, which is the, probably the one that gets all the attention, okay, because we set up everything beneath him, He's one on top that just does his thing, okay? And that's what he, you know, wanted to be at that point. And I'm like, I want to be, I want to play the top, right? Eh? But I said, no, uh, if that's what he wants to do, that's what, you know, he'll let him go that way. 
okay? So then the younger one, he wants to play djembe. Like, oh man, come on, brother. Okay, but now you have to understand pitches, okay? You gotta understand what a djembe drum is, what a congo drum is, but you have to understand pitches. We play pitches, okay? A lot of people don't understand that. Can you play a djembe with the conga? Yeah, if you know where to fit, you know. And you got to know something about the, uh, they have like, uh, I guess, octaves or whatever. But in your pitches, you have to know where they fit in, okay? Just Not just the sound where it fits in, because we have like a mother, father, baby, okay? Or the top, bottom, and middle, and our percussion players, okay, which are cousins, okay? So you got to know how that fits in, okay, the drums and percussion. Okay, but you also have to know the sounds. There's layers of, it's like you have the layers of drums, there's layers of sound. Okay, and you cannot be, you have, you gotta give up the ego. You gotta get up, give up the ego. And like I'm saying, that's why I left, you know, you know, open up for these acts and stuff like that. Later for that, let me work with my family. I, I like to, you know, say, encourage them. I like to be real with them. I got. I like to let them understand pitfalls. Don't get too big, man. Don't believe, you know, like say the crowd or believe the the, the that's like groupies. Don't don't really believe that. No perfection in your heart, man. From the work you put in it, you know, from your your peers, you know, and try to work with better drummers because you're always going to hear things that you can't do yet. Okay, you just gotta figure out how can they do that, wow. You know, that was like fantastic. So you always open yourself up to other things, you know, so you don't, like I'm just this king. And you find out you just, maybe a pawn, man. You know what I'm saying? You just haven't been around the kings yet, you know. So you have to, um, you know, you, you, you seek for uh, perfection, but don't ever think that you, you know, you've got it. Or you allow your ego to, which is probably one of our really biggest problems, that ego, okay? If we can kind of, you know, kind of dissolve that, you know, eliminate that, you know, if we can. And there's a certain amount of ego that, that you need to think I can do that, okay? But you don't have to fill yourself up with it so hard that you become arrogant or something like that. Her name is Doreen Claudia uh, Jackson, Green Jackson, if you want to. Her, her traditional name is Falola. Okay, you want me to talk about Falola? Okay, the Falola, she's our dancer. She's my baby. She's my big baby. I got to be careful now. Like, say, through the years, okay, I've had to, to learn her. And she used to be my big baby. And if I call her big now, she says, what do you mean big? <laughs> I'm like, okay, we can't use that word. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know, well, you're my big, beautiful baby. I got to adjust it because we, we work together. And we're, we're, that's my wife. And that's my baby too, man, you know. Okay, she's been a dancer from, I guess from here. She's like a dancer that they used to have their little house parties and stuff like that. And she would dance at the party until she go to sleep. She's sitting in the chair and she's sleep. She's just a person that has that in her, her, her blood. Yeah. And she's been through all kinds of, you know, she used to teach, I think, was it like creative dance or interpretive dance things like that until, say, I met her with the Art Council here, with some of the different schools, you know, things like that. And then when she met me, I was more into the African dancing, okay? And, you know, I would be around a lot of, around the dancers. She would, sometimes we, she rehearsed with us, at, you know, say in Charleston, you know, or we would go, go to the village. And then down there, we, she would pick up different dancers. And then sometimes we'd work with, you know, like say, that's the ancestor dancers that they had down there. we work with them. So she picked up rhythms, you know, dance, you know, dances, rhythms there. 
and then we got good at say living in uh, say Georgetown you have to be able to if you have tapes okay so you can kind of dissect a particular say drum rhythm or even a dance say routine so you can see it break it down just get the count first okay look at the, the legs you know see what the legs are doing what the arms are doing okay where the hips are at you know uh, and you kind of uh, you know some of the rhythms you can uh, uh, dance rhythms you can break down and then my wife likes to she always she wanted to be like a like working a, a daycare center or something like that okay work with children okay so all right once we started with the dancing so of course she wants to teach the children how to dance so you know for years we had you know like you know up to 10 15 dancers you know until you know i guess we got older and a lot of them started you know they were having going to, off to school and married and now i you know see some of them you know but she's been our probably the backbone you know of it you know and and uh and so far as if we play i'm always looking at her okay because we're going to have a, just our communication between you know it's going to be eye contact or something like that or a gesture or something like that that we know how what we have to do now you know um and she's smarter at that than me i got a big mouth like you know <laughs> She said, you really don't have to say it. Didn't, didn't that tell you? I said, yeah, but I needed to say it. <laughs> Egbe Kilimanjaro. Egbe, E-G-E-B-E. Egbe meaning family or organization. Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. And what we do was like African Caribbean drum and dance. Caribbean side, okay. Uh, ah, that's so nice. That is nice. And connecting with the Gullah, but we'll we'll get to that, okay. Okay, you have the African say drumming, okay. Uh, if you're gonna say you're gonna have like say drummers that are African drummers, you know, or traditional. African drummers not really if you're playing for an audience you've already taken it out of the tradition you know we play for something else okay we play for climax okay and there's a lot that goes with that, okay? There's, um, and it, there's reason. Not, I'm playing for audience, we're playing for this check, man, you know? It's not necessarily that, although there may be tokens of, but as far as playing for the money or something like that, it ain't about that, okay? You're playing for, it's like climax or release, okay? and uh you know say entrance into another area of say the mind okay just like say the you know the psychiatrist is saying oh yeah when you drum they have their you know like they'll tag you up or whatever connect you and they watch your brain waves and they see something happening okay this is like kind of what's happening could be you can call it maybe trance or something like that because you really can't beat something so hard, you know, for so long and not be a little, you know, they say, hey, you're a little crazy, <laughs> you know, say, hey, crazy, brother, something different, okay? But you play for, you know, it could be for your ancestors, which is very, you know, that's probably the bottom line, you know, for your ancestors and your, uh, um, just say, say uh, you have different saints or something like that, or however, whatever you call them, okay, from whatever particular, custom, you know, uh, area you're coming from, 
Okay, but it, it's usually there's something to do with, with, the, with the ancestors. When you live in a particular area, okay, this is your, say, an environment. You're, you're, it vibrates at a certain, you know, level, the way that it, it vibrates. Someone that comes in, say, from a different community, you can usually pick up, say, different things, different ways that they're doing things, okay? You become a part of that particular environment. And I know that's affected my drumming. Okay, because when I have my drummers, like say when Gene comes down, okay, and he's probably one of the baddest drummers in, in probably in the world as far as spiritual uh, drumming, cultural drumming, okay. Uh, he's picking up things, and I have to ask him, you know, like, oh, what's up with that, man? You know, or say, what's the top saying? You got a drum that's playing something, okay? He's, 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 he's speaking of, you know, like say the feel of the community. He's, you know, the community's gonna understand what he's saying. Okay? Uh, we used to have, every summer, there's like a, you know, I used to party, we used to party a lot, man. And every summer there's a, a, a record that comes out that's more or less the signature song for that summer. You know, so I don't know if it's like, sometimes like, we will listen to Planet Rock. We come back from Columbia the other day and then Pac Jam came on, you know. Say, yeah, but that was the whole summer. I go back, like, say, maybe 30, 40 years of that particular summer, that that's the song for that particular summer, okay? Say, like, the drums, or how our particular style of drum is affected by this place, this environment, this vibration. Um, there's a sound of this place. There's a sound of this place. And it, it's vibrating. You just got to kind of feel it. You got to watch the community, see it, and just let it kind of be natural. I've gone down to, uh, see, like in the Bahamas. Okay. With that, that was last year. Okay. This is part of, you know, we do costume making. Okay. And I went down. There's a grant from the South Carolina Art Commission. I went to Freeport. Okay. Uh, you know, that we uh, was costume making, drum making, okay? They're genius. Genius people, something out of nothing, okay? Something out of nothing. Drums that are made from uh, uh, oil barrels. Big oil, oil barrel, uh, cows, cow skin, boom. They make it, okay? And I, you know, I, have, I, I taped everything, shot it from A to Z, okay? Uh, they could not play a four, okay? They play till they make the make it rain, okay? So I'm saying, like, say, uh, uh, the, the environment has a lot to do with it, okay? There is a connection between the drum and nature. You're a part of nature. You're just manipulating, say, sound or vibrations or something like that, okay? And you know, just you know, working with these guys, man. You know, so a week, man, they're building from cardboard, man. You know, beautiful costumes. You know, beautiful costumes. And cardboard and things that you probably throw away. You know, and making something beautiful out of them. Okay. Brother was telling me, like, hey, man, we make it rain, brother. You know, I didn't see, you know, I, you know. And I had to, fortunately I was there, we had a, it was a rehearsal. I didn't want to go when they had, say, a Junk Canoe, which is their carnival. I didn't want to go then. I said, no, I want to go to what makes the carnival. What do y'all do before the carnival? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I caught rehearsal, and within, say, 10 minutes, it rained, okay? But you have to understand, it's not, just say, they, that's the spiritual part, okay? It's not necessarily just drumming for the, say, for money or something like that, okay? You cannot just carry a big 50-pound or 50-gallon garbage can like that for three, four, five miles and be in your right mind, okay? And I'm trying to look at, you know, like the brothers, you know, that you're carrying this man and it's like, you ain't tired? And I see the blood running down his arm, you know? 
But then that to him, that's a badge of, yeah, well, pretty soon that will, by the time we get right, that'll callous up or whatever, you know, and you know, but you can't play like that. You don't, in your normal mind, you have to elevate, okay? And they elevate so far, they just like become a part of this environment, okay? Where they're drumming, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's like, you know, I can drum to make thunder or something like that. And it's something that you say, okay? But, you know, they actually, you know, his brother said, I had told you it was gonna make rain, didn't I? He said, that's what we do. We get to a certain level, and, the, you know, there's usually females out there, they have their dancers, and the crowd, when they get to a certain level of whatever it is here, okay, that is a part of that universe that's there, it, they can make it happen, you know. Okay, the, the drum, the thunder though, that was in Haiti, okay, that's the second time I went down there, okay, and I had an initiation. I'm like a drummer, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a paid drummer. I, I have my pay, I, I'm on the porch and I'm playing. And it's paid for me to sweat. And uh, feel my hands feeling a little thicker, you know, picking up a rhythm that uh, sometimes is a rhythm I haven't played in 15 years. And it comes back. And I was like, oh yeah, if I can remember it, the next day I'll forget it, you know. But I know it's there and I know as, as I continue, it'll come back in regular okay I was in Haiti and I was doing a, a, an initiation okay I'm like I'm an initiated drummer okay I just didn't pick them up and say I'm gonna drum okay I had to go through initiations okay uh, first time I went to, to Haiti it was more of say tourist type you know to look at this guy American you know Blanc I'm not a Blanc man you know, he said, no, 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 we don't mean to say white, but you're Blanc, you're American. I said, not really, my brother. Yeah, I'm from America, but I'm just like you. There's no difference between me and you. Only difference is maybe I wrote up something to get down here with you, you know, but we're brothers, sisters, whatever, right. in, in what we do and as human beings. Right. Right. Don't call me a Blanc, I'm not yeah. a Blanc. He said, oh, well, you're my lot. As I, well, right. I, you, I'll go with that. Okay, so we'll, I'll be m m a lot and let's, let's, you know, just do what we do, man. Okay, so, but the first time it was more, yeah, I guess they were testing me then, just to see what my head was. See if I was like, had that American, I don't know, man, sometimes Americans have this, they got to condescend, man. They have to, there's, there's like a superior thing for the, uh, I guess, the people that might be more, yeah, they're more primitive or something like that but okay but with the drums okay and so what I did I had to go to, to initiation it took a couple of days okay last day I you know I, I had to you know sit with my godfather in his space you know and did we had to do and he said now drum okay I was like, okay you know gave me the drums and I drum and I made thunder, okay? And it's not just like say, you know, that this, say, yeah, man, I can jump to make thunder. I made thunder, okay? Or whatever he did or whatever we did made me hear thunder. Cause I listened, I was like, and it was, I said, well, it must be the, the acoustics or something, you know? And he, tell, he said, he says, uh, you're a drummer, you know? I said, yeah, I'm a drummer. Okay, he said, well, show me. Okay, and that's when we, you know, yeah. And that was something that, so many things that, you know, but that's one of the things that happened. It's not, it's extraordinary or, or super, you know, it's areas that you can go to that are much, uh, I guess it could be deeper or more expansive that you may not understand it, and it may not be really, say, humanly possible, but it is. And you have to, you kind of learn to just say, well, okay, I kind of experienced that, and you know, you know, yeah, yeah. And there's a going back, that area, that 
space and time, I want to go back, man. I'm trying to, you know, get to the level, say with the drummers I have here, or the drummers I work with, where to take it. So we go beyond, oh man, my hand hurts, or beyond, you know, something. To me, it might be kind of minimal or something like that. So let's, come on, let's play, man. Let's, let's get off, bro. Well, I, come on, get me off, man. And they're like, come on, see, see, cool. my hands ain't wood. I said, but when you play enough, if you put your heart and your soul into it, let it take you, man. You ain't gonna feel nothing, man. You know, you have to, there's a religious involvement, okay? Because some, you know, some the islands, the, 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 many of the islands, they're isolates, man. You know, so a lot of the traditions are still there. That, you know, somebody in Nigeria said, damn, you all do that? My grandfather used to do that. Okay, but this is all they had to hold on to, okay? They're isolates, but they were also controlled by dominant or colonial powers, okay? There's going to be a colonial influence, okay? But people are people, okay? People, you know, if you, you might be English or French, French, but if you're into music, there's still a point of... You know, it could be gratification or release that you're going for, where you can connect as musicians. Okay, so it's, it's like a, a like a universal language. When you get to the outlawing, okay, we'll come back to South Carolina, to Georgetown. Okay, 17. Uh, was it was 2939. What was that? The uh, Stoner Rebellion. Okay, Charleston, Stoner Rebellion, boom. They use the drum after that, they outlawed. Okay, um, conch shell. Okay, which they use a lot down in, you know, in the islands. Okay, and I had a brother, man, I was doing, he was trying to find out what would happen. Brother on, on Acadia, Snowy, he's passed now, if you know. Okay, and I talked to Snowy, and Snowy was telling me about the, the conch. We were supposed to be going to get one, but I got that one from Bahamas. And he was telling me that the people would communicate, you know, that the, the drums were, were outlawed, but the people would communicate with the conch shell. Okay, and they would go from plantation to plantation that they had a particular language, just like the drums, like a non form of nonverbal uh, communication to communicate. Okay, so, you know, like I said, that conch shell, okay, and you have a lot of, say, the drum. All right, so you have outlawing of drums, okay. But drum is just a percussion instrument, which means you hit. So if you hit your hands or you take your foot and hit the floor, you know, you have the beat and you can recreate the same patterns that we do here. So the drum rhythm goes underground into the churches, okay? So if you see it, you know, or hear it, you understand if you can just, you, you know, uh, you have to remove, say, prejudgments or something like that. Okay, you have to. You understand God is good. Okay, it doesn't come in a particular color or whatever or religion or something. God is good. If you, I don't care what type of religion. If it's the super religion, whatever that one is, and you're doing bad, come on, man. You just, it just ain't godly here, you know. Okay, yeah. So. Okay, so you have um, within the church, you know, church, you know, you, you, you I, one thing I, I, I wanted to do, okay, and his brother, uh, Halotunji, he was drumming, okay, and his other brother, his name is Mochang, okay, Mochang, I met him, he was the director of the National Ballet of Sen Senegal, okay, Catherine Dunham brought him from uh, over in uh, Senegal, okay, and, um, I was working with him. I couldn't hang with the brothers. My brothers were monsters, you know. <laughs> and they, you know, but I, I, I learned. And our thing was like, say in the church, you, you go in and you're playing, and they'll play or get to a certain level of consciousness, and this Holy Ghost comes. Okay. My question is, and I've grown up with that. My great grandmother was a, she was a, she was an ordained minister, and even to the time she was a hundred and. She died at 106, 100, something like that. We'd have prayer meetings. 
and on uh, it's like Friday nights, and we'd sing our songs and stuff like that. And then it was a particular point where, okay, the kids, and y'all go in the kitchen, and y'all can go ahead and eat, and now we're gonna we're gonna get down or whatever. And then I would hear my great grandmother, and she had her legs were bold, and she had a cane walking around the house, and I would hear her feet hitting the floor, do, 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 do. and I knew. And don't have that type of strength. She don't have that, okay? But that was her. And there was something that took over her that allowed her. Yeah, yeah, I, and, and you know. So, but you, you know, with Mo Chung was like, well, who is that? Okay, usually, you know, if you say Yoruba is just one that's close here, okay, and, well, in this country, okay, you have an understanding of, say, like Orisha, or in Haiti they have the, like Loa or something like that. You know there's a particular rhythm that you can play to try to, to make that Orisha come to you, okay? Or come to the, you know, and, okay. So we know, like, say, Yemoja, Ogun, Ochosi, Alegba, you know, they all have their particular rhythms, all their different chants, okay? Because we're still connected with the motherland it was able to, to carry through, okay? But who was this, you know, the, this uh, uh, Holy Ghost? You're gonna say it's Jesus? I don't, I've read a lot about Jesus. I don't know about him foaming and, you know, whatever. I know a lot of very good, some things, beautiful things, whatever. But that, those particular attributes, you know, the attributes of watching that particular person, you know, I don't know. And then, you know, we talk, he says, yeah, well, you just, you need someone. And that was my thing, someone that knows, say, the, the, the culture, knows these particular spirits that can come, you know, into a, a person to identify who that, that particular, per, that Holy Spirit is, or a particular spirit that they call up that these things start happening, okay, which is kind of, I don't sanitize now, man. You know, so, but this kind of gets back to the historical connection and the, I guess, the rawness of, say, like, say, Africa, the drumming, that connection with, say, the, say, the, the percussion, okay? With the blacksmith, he was a percussionist, he's a drummer. He's allowed to hit and he's talking, okay? Which is our communication. So, and I was trying to, I was trying to get these brothers there. With the whole blade. Okay, so you know this guy is, is playing, but they, play, they use a hoe, all right, they're out in the field. And communicating with, the, with that hoe in certain rhythmic, say, patterns. And I've, I, I've, I've read about it, but I need to see, I want to see that. What do you say? What do you mean? Are you hitting the ground? Are you, there's two of you hitting together? What's, I, want, I want to see that. I want to know more, you know. So, okay, so you have that, the connection, the long connection. You have this color. Okay, ABC Islands, okay? Okay, Antigua, uh, was it Bonaire, uh, Corvassau, okay. Uh, they speak Papi, Papi Mentu, Papi Mentu, right? Okay, that's a color. Okay, but they have a different, say here they have a, uh, the language part, they have a, I was like English, was the place English, backdrop there, it may be like say a Dutch, say yeah, backdrop to the language that are coming in of the, these, these African people, these uh, 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 sailors or whatever, and, and merchants or whatever, so they can connect, say verbally, okay? They all, these islands, just like say these South, these yeah, South Carolina, these islands out here, these islands go all the way down. Right. You know, they go down to the Bahamas. Right. There's been travel out there, not just pirates. You know, or just say escape routes, okay? Or even say, you know, people to be, to, to go off to these islands to be free, you know? So there's a, um, that connection, okay, is say like say with the Gullah, okay, so it's Gullah here, but then you go to, um, to Haiti, 
and they have it's like a, uh, uh, it's like a patois that the, the French and the um, just like in New Orleans, what is that word? Uh, Creole. And the Creole, okay, it's like a French backdrop, okay? But this is like their gala, okay? And then like say the ABC Islands or whatever, or even like say Jamaica, I went to the Bahamas, man. They're talking to say gala, you know? I'm like, wait a minute, man. And I, I talked to, and I fortunately I had, had an elder to talk to. He says, man, they call us Geechees. That's what he mean by that. He said, well, they call us Geechees. You know, they said that there was a particular time, like say during the Civil War, when uh, was a Sherman came down with his and was burning and whatever. A lot of the rich slave owners, they got up and went down to the islands. You know, so a lot of their, uh, you know, there's rice down here. I think it might be Andros Island. You know, but some of the things that they were doing there, they took here till the heat was off or whatever. Okay, so that connection say like the Gullah, that's what I'm saying, I couldn't answer Gullah because it means so many things so to many me, things, yes. you know, but you're allowing me to talk so I can kind of regurgitate some things, okay, but that Gullah to me is, it's no different than, you know, I, I you know, uh, I talk to the brothers uh, there and I listen, they're talking Gullah, that is Gullah. So I asked the brother, you know, I said, well, what are y'all, um, what's, what's up with that, man? He, he, where are you from? And he was saying, no, there's a lot of Haitians. You're hearing Haitians here, Jamaicans are here, you know, and that Gullah is here too. Another thing, the churches, okay, not just, okay, say the Bahamas, okay? The churches there are, uh, and if you listen to some of, of the music, the gospel, okay? They have, man, it's just like, you know, I tell my wife, is this, y'all sing like that? She says, yeah, that's one of our songs too. The only difference, they have a little more percussion. Here, they might have been like, you get your fingers cut off or your hands cut off. If you use that particular drum, there they have a little more, you know, a little more access to that, you know. But they did, they were still robbed of a lot of different things, okay, that uh, culturally, that they may not, that's why I had, oh man, these guys were like, man, get them here. Because the, the particular style of drumming, it didn't come that way, okay? And down there, they're trying to be, they have different study groups and stuff like that. And they, you know, they really want to be a little more independent, you know, thinking, knowing about who they are, where they came from, things like that, okay? Because all the islands have a, you know, the Barbados, but you know, they've just gotten their, say, independence for 50 years, you know, ago. It's not really that long ago. Yeah. So they're in certain, it's like, stages of development that, okay, me going down, I'm trying to get information about their drum making, costume making. They want to get information for me about, you know, I had to hold the cultural community, they didn't have a drum. I'm like, man, wow, you don't have, there's no kungus, no little toy djembe, they're not there, okay? And it's not like, oh man, they can't drum. It's not like that. They're just another part of that circle where they're at. They got these big garbage cans. They've maintained it, but they've had to do it a certain way because of, you know, that particular oppression or slavery or however, you know, to, to keep it, you know, keep it, it's, it's going.